the Q-Pod is a cuvette holder. You put a cuvette in here, and you have a series of different kinds of lenses. The very nature of the device allows you to do temperature control so that there are temperature changes occurring in here. The, the optics are held in a very stable manner. It's a Peltier unit, so you have to be able to draw heat out of the Peltier. Say you set a temperature of 60 degrees and decide you're going to take it down to 20 degrees. The Peltier is a heat pump, and it pumps the heat out of the device. So you have to do something with that extra heat. So what we do is we provide with, with every package our bath 100, we call it. And all it is is an aquarium pump, a, a, a robust aquarium pump. We provide also the bucket that comes along with it. And that is the water that's going to circulate through it. So to make that happen, I'm going to take the water from the pump, put it in here. I'm going to take the water out of here and put it back in the bucket. There's a cover that goes on the bucket, and you turn on the pump by plugging it in. And all of these components can be bought individually. Uh, each package includes Q-Blue, and this we're going to actually give away on our website. You can't use Q-Blue unless you have a Q-Pod. It includes a power adapter. We put in a USB cable because realistically we think people are going to be using it. Uh, we provide the circulating pump bucket and fittings that allow you to run water through. We provide a temperature calibration certificate. We take the calibration very seriously. With every Q-Pod we provide an accessory kit which comes with a little wrench that you need. It comes with, with optical slits. There's the ability to put optical slits in around the Q-Net. And that can be very useful for controlling intensity. Or if you want to do something like use a very small micro cuvette and you want to control where the light hits the cuvette, we have a magnetic stir bar and I put it in a cuvette. It's very important to have stirring when you're controlling temperature because what you want to do is to maintain uniform temperature. Buy a standard series 400 or 500 of the Mr. Prolet. This will simply measure the temperature wherever it is. Of course, we have to provide power to the Q-Pod. And when we plug it in, we have effectively turned it on. Now what I'm going to do is um, show you my computer screen. The unit went out there and it found the Bluetooth connection and it's now connected with the uh, Q-Pod. And what you see here is the, the program QBlue running. And uh, notice the, the temperature of the QBAT holder is now drifting up very, very slowly. Here's the temperature of the QBAT holder, and, and you can see it's 24.1 and drifting up. There's a target temperature, and that's the temperature it's going to go to when you set the temperature. You can turn the stirrer on and off, and um, it found the external uh, probe plugged in and the room temperature is apparently 23.9 degrees. So let's uh, turn on the temperature controller and set it to a target temperature of 20 degrees. It is now seeking, it's now going down to uh, 20 degrees, it's going to set its temperature at 20 degrees. I think we should turn on the stirrer, so I'll, I'll click on the on. And now if, if you looked in there you'd see the little magnetic stirrer going around at 120 RPM. Let's say I want it to stir a little bit faster. I can say, let's go 600 RPM. Um, anyway, it is now seeking 20 degrees. So the new product, you're familiar, I'm sure, with the old QPod. It's now called uh, QPod 2E, which, as we've already pretty much covered, is a, a sample compartment for fiber optic spectroscopy. It's powered with Peltier temperature control. It has magnetic stirring and it has very high quality fused silica lenses. This sample compartment allows you to add things like polarizers and filter holders. So people who want to set up a very complicated experiment can set it up in many different ways. Now here's a quick comparison between the QPod and the QPod 2E. The QPod uses this big temperature controller. The QPod 2E, on the other hand, has all of the electronics in its base but in order to have a display, you have to have the program QBlue running. 
wide temperature range, minus 30 to plus 105 degrees, plus or minus 0 0.05, very steady temperatures. We can make an extended temperature version that allows you to go up to 150 degrees. It has magnetic stirring with precise control of the rate. It takes a standard 12.5 millimeter square cuvette. Now that's your standard cuvette. Um, they make micro cuvettes and so forth. Um, it uses a Z height of 8.5 millimeters. And as I mentioned, it'll hold either uh, half inch or one inch round uh, filters. Uh, here's just uh, a picture of the construction of it. There's a tower that's temperature controlled with a Peltier unit on the bottom of it and a magnetic stirring motor inside. And this unit is pushed up inside of that housing. And there's an electronic board that does all of the temperature control, the PID control, that's put in the bottom of this unit. There are two standard ways of making measurements. One is that you can do absorbance measurements, another is you can do fluorescence measurements. Use two collimating lenses to do absorbance measurements, and use two imaging lenses to do fluorescence at 90 degrees. Now an imaging lens takes an image of the end of the fiber and places it with a magnification of one in the middle of the cuvette. And then it takes the light in the middle of the cuvette and images it on the second fiber using magnification of one. So we're using only a tiny volume in the middle of the fluorescence cuvette, and it allows us to very efficiently collect the light. You can put mirror plugs, which are spherical mirrors, opposite each of the lenses and, and almost get a factor four in intensity. The lenses are broadband era coated fused silica, and they work from the UV to the near infrared. It's a very good coating. They're high quality mirrors, SMA fiber optic connectors on all the lenses to be compatible with your ocean optics equipment. There are also optional polarizers. Somebody can set this up as a fairly sophisticated spectrometer. And I want to look back and see how the temperature controller is doing. Oh, it went down and it uh, adjusted to 20 degrees. Let's do something interesting. Let's, let's set its temperature to 60 degrees, see how long it takes to get there. Uh, change the target temperature, set it to 60 degrees, and you notice that it's taking off for 60 degrees. And you notice that the Peltier temperature control allows you to change the temperature quite rapidly. And it's very precise. No nonsense control. And uh, you can get a lot more experiments done in a much more precise manner.